Greetings and welcome BUSN 1360 online section of Software Applications for Business. Welcome! I'm Dr. McGrory and I'm going to be your instructor in this new year, Happy New Year, in this new decade, in this new semester, and in this new course. Wow, it's a lot of new, right? We did start classes officially yesterday. Today is Wednesday, January 22nd, 2020, and I wanted to reach out to you to make sure that you've gotten into the course, that you're looking around, that you're moving forward. There's no time to delay. You want to make sure that you are getting started and engaged in the class. So I wanted to welcome you into it, and I wanted to talk to you about assignments that are due as soon as this weekend. And if you are saying, what? How was I supposed to know that? Where is my schedule? Who told me this? Well, want to make sure you know where that information is. If you are wondering, where is my book? Do I need an access code? What am I supposed to be doing right now? These are the kind of questions that we want to make sure that, that we address, okay? So the first thing I'm going to ask you to do is open your Chrome browser. Now, your computer probably came with Internet Explorer or Explorer, you know, the, the uh, Microsoft browser. Yes, that's certainly fine. However, what you will find is that code, the you know programs in the background that are written for one browser, don't always work as well in another browser. So it's good to have different browsers so that you know you're working on an assignment and you're saying, why won't it work right? Why won't it let me do what I want to do? You may find that if you simply open that in a different browser, that it works fine, no problem. Okay, so I recommend Chrome. Google it, C-H-R-O-M-E. It's a free download. Install it on your computer. Another browser that, if you do run into problems with Chrome, it tends to work well in our class, but if you do run into problems with Chrome, Firefox, all one word, Firefox. Google that. That's another free download. Install that on your computer. So I recommend that. Some students go into pause by uh, clicking first to My Southwest. Yeah, sure, no problem, you can do that. Uh, I'm going to go more directly. I'm going to go up here to Pause. Uh, you'll notice there's two different logins. The Both get you to the same place. You have to type out your email address there. Uh, the administrative login, I can just simply uh, type in my um, username. I'm going to put my password in there and hit the Enter key. And here I am in my class. Now, um, I am going to go up here to my Select a Course button. When I click on that, you should see all your classes. And I'll give you a little hint. Um, I, I have a lot of things that I do in pause, and so I have a long listing of, of various classes. But And you won't have that many, I understand. But see this little pin? If you have a long list of classes, you can click that pin, and what that'll do is that'll move it so that it stays at the top. So anytime you're looking at it, you'll be able, looking for your courses, you'll be able to find it quickly. So I'm going to click our course to go right into it. And because I am the instructor and I see things just like you wouldn't have this course admin menu thing, you know, I mean, little things like that, I'm going to go up here and click on my name, and I'm going to change it. You, you would not do this. Just bear with me for a moment. Ah, now we're caught up together. I'm caught up with you because now my screen should look like your screen. So the first thing I would encourage you to do is scroll down. There are, you know, information up here that our distance education people put in, but if you'll scroll down, then you'll get some information from me, you know, just the kind of the picture of what our book looks like, but we're going to talk about that because we use the digital version, but things for you to read, my name, my office location, and two very important pieces of information. We're going to talk about that as well. You're going to use a product called My IT Lab. Now, this is, when I say a product, it's a website that you're going to go to. How do you get access to it? Well, first of all, you need to make sure you get into our course. So this is going to be the course code. And then you're going to need an access code. And when you enrolled in the course, you bought that access code by default. Now, you did buy it by default, and so this access code will work for you unless you opted out. 
Now, when I say opted out, the bookstore has sent you a variety of emails, and if you clicked into those emails and you saw this list and it said, you know, basically, do you want to not be involved in the program and you unchecked it to say, get me out, you might have opted out, okay? And so you need to very quickly opt back in, in my opinion. And we'll go through the syllabus and you'll see some information in regards to that. But these are two pieces of information that you're going to need. The course that is ours in my IT lab, this is our course code, and then the access code that you paid for when you enrolled in the course. I'm going to scroll back up. All we've done, we logged into pause, we clicked for our class, and we scrolled down. That's all we've done so far, and look at all that great information. Now, I think, I'd like to pat myself on the back and say, well, I think I have it organized pretty good. You come over here to content, and, okay, and as we look through the content, you're going to see this whole table of contents, and it's long. I can scroll down. I don't want to make you dizzy, but I can scroll down, and look at all these categories over here on the left, and you might even be seeing the full table of contents um, I've been clicking around in here, so I've changed my list, but you might be seeing all of this, and that's great. Nothing wrong with that at all. That's perfect, right? So this is table of contents. You can click on, of course, getting started and start to read through these pages. I think it's important to do that. I'm just not doing it on the video, but it's not because I don't think it's important. It is important. Then I'm going to go to syllabus schedule and my IT lab and that's a group that I've created over here on the side when I clicked that notice that a link for supplemental materials has appeared the first thing I want to show you is that when I've clicked on syllabus schedule and my IT lab I now see a link to my syllabus I'm gonna click that and it opens in a new tab now how do I get orientated into the course you read the syllabus and it's important to do that. What I find is that when students skip this step and they say, I'll just look at it later, first of all, you never do. And then if you do, it's because you're frantic and you're upset and you're frustrated. And now that you've kind of gone down the wrong road, you're trying to back up and figure out what to do. It's much better to go through it. You may not understand everything right away, but to keep referencing it. That's a real key to success. All right, so as I go through here, you're going to read about me. You're going to find out about things, you know, office hours, and that email is very definitely the way that we should communicate. And I'll tell you, you know, a couple little hidden gems here. Here's one. Do you right now have Microsoft Office installed on your computer? If you don't, you can get it for free using your Southwest username and password you can log in to this website that I have right here in the syllabus and all you have to do is click on it and log in portal.microsoft.com once you get to that website if you're struggling with what to do listen bring your laptop up to the help desk and you know at, on campus and ask for help um, even if you have a, a computer where it's kind of an all-in-one but it's not a laptop they're typically light enough where you could, you know, put it in some kind of bag and, and bring it up and, and get some help on that. So don't hesitate, you know, reach out to that uh, help desk. Okay. It is imperative that you start ready to work, and of course that's very important. And I go through and I explain, you know, I mean, there's all kinds of things. But here's, now we're getting into the required text. Very important. This course participates in the Include Ed program. In the past week, they changed the name of Include Ed, and they call it DEI. So you will hear it referred to as under both names, Include Ed or DEI. And what that means is that when you enrolled in the course, you purchased your ebook, which is required for this course. The printed book will not provide what you need. You need the ebook, okay, and the access code you got all of that or the, to these digital assignments you got all of that when you enrolled in the course and so that's an awesome thing okay so read through this I'm skimming it for the sake of time on this video but it does not mean that it's unimportant quite the opposite I'm, I'm covering this so that you understand it's important to go in here and review it alright so 
In terms of uh, assessment, assessment and grading, your method of evaluation, what are you supposed to do? What I've done here is I've here's each of the assignments that you're supposed to be doing, how many points they are, whether or not you have a, a drop grade, how many attempts that you have. And in this syllabus, I've taken the time to spell all that out. This is stuff that students commonly have questions about. Did you say I had a drop grade? How many drop grades did I have? How many times can we do this? Do I just get one attempt? Do you average the attempts? Is it just my highest score? All of those questions are answered right here in that syllabus. And when you take the time to read it, you'll remember it. Do it calmly, right? Don't, don't be in a hurry as you do it. Here's another hidden jewel. I'm going to have you, as part of your assignments, do something called simulation uh, in my IT lab. Well, what does that mean? How do I do that? What do I have to... Look, here's a YouTube video. It's a couple minutes. It was created by Pearson, and it's going to explain things to you, and even how to you know, get extra information, and so I think you should take some time to look at that. Um, cases. What are cases? I don't understand what you're... Look, all spelled out right here, okay? So take some time, please, really do, because I think you'll benefit from that. How many points? Well, again, I'm just scrolling down through the syllabus, and here you're going to see <clears throat> excuse me, exactly how many points you earn for each assignment. It's even summarizing the drop grades for you. Uh, so how do I calculate my grade? How many points do I need to get to get an A? You're going to have all that information right there. So I encourage you to look at that. Now, I've got that syllabus. It's open here. I'm going to go back to pause right and across the top you see these breadcrumbs and let's go back to syllabus schedule and my IT lab just to recap we logged into pause we clicked the link for our class we went to course finder we clicked the link to our class we clicked on content and we're looking at the table of contents like syllabus schedule and my IT lab we started out looking at the syllabus now, the next thing I said, you know, one of your questions is, what am I supposed to be doing? What assignments are due? And um, I have here for you a schedule uh, of what you're supposed to be doing. And this is in a web page, as you can see, a web page format. So I can click on that. And sometimes this is easier because you can listen to it. And, you know, it, all the information is right there. But one thing I think I would, I'm going to use my back button. One thing I think I would encourage you to do that is sometimes helpful, it, it just depends on your preferences. Remember I said there was the supplemental materials? It, it, this is that right here. This is the category. And if you scroll down, you'll see that I also have that schedule in a PDF format. This is nice to print, okay? So you may want to click on that. Let me do that. And here it is in this window. Be patient as it loads and it tells you what you're supposed to be doing you know each day but what I like about this PDF is that you can see at the bottom here you can click this download button save it to your computer print it I keep this in my house I keep this right next to my computer because sometimes I what am I supposed to be doing I can't remember what I'm supposed to be doing and I just want to very quickly check and if it's sitting there if it's printed that I can very easily reference it okay so I said you had assignments due and and look at this it says that this week you are supposed to be looking at your syllabus you're supposed to be looking at your schedule you're supposed to be getting your My IT Lab set up and start working within My IT Lab, right? And it says, well, what am I supposed to be doing? Well, you need to log in to pause and you need to start completing these assignments like the attendance quiz. And we're going to look at that, like posting your introduction on the discussion board. And you even have a quiz due in pause and you have your first case due in pause. Now, when are these things due? This schedule shows me right here, due this week. And I think if I was you, I would focus on these things that are due Saturday. And then I would look ahead to the things that are due Tuesday. And I think you'll find that these things that are due Saturday are quick and easy assignments, but you do need to get started, and that's the purpose. So let's focus on our Saturday assignments. And in fact, I'm going to go ahead and download this so that we can reference it easily and in Chrome it's going to appear down here at the bottom 
and I'm clicking that to open it so that I can come back and reference this very quickly. Okay, that's my PDF. I'm going back to pause. Bear with me. Stay with me. In pause, um, we were looking at the content, getting started, and specifically at the syllabus and schedule, and I pointed out to you the supplemental materials, uh, which had have has information in a PDF format, right? Now, here it says this is your My IT information and course code, and I'm going to click on that so that you can see this is that same course code that you found on the home page of our course in pause and it gives you you know just kind of the the basic information but what it does not give you is that access code so remember that you will also need the access code don't forget that um, you can print this I also have this for you in the supplemental materials where it's just going to display in a more printable format. So it just depends on whether you're reading it on the screen or whether you're looking at it in a, a more printable format. So I encourage you to, to you know, look through all that. Okay, I'm going to walk you through this so let me go back and we've looked at our syllabus, our schedule, and our My IT Lab information. So we need to get started. On that, um, your My IT Lab course code information, I tell you to open up a tab in your browser and you're going to go to myitlab.com and just press enter. Now, some students type it into the Google box and all that kind of stuff. Why? Just go up here to the very top and type in My IT Lab, but you have to click near the top, okay? MyITLab.com. It will take you to this longer, you know, I don't want to type all that, so just type MyITLab.com and bookmark it because you're going to be here a lot. So now you're going to register, right? And you're going to register as a student. Um, it says I need to turn off pop-ups and you are going to fight with this all semester long. So it's very good that we're looking at this. When I clicked register as a student, up here in the right hand corner, I see this little red. If you are in a different browser, it could be over here on the left side, it could be a different symbol, but you're looking for a red X, something red, red dot, click on that. And what I would encourage you to do is to say always allow this to pop up and redirect. Click on done. <clears throat> Uh, let's see, do I need to do that again? Uh, yeah, skip for now because we just did it. Oh, so it says I need three things. I need an email address. You may use whichever email address you prefer. You can of course use your Southwest email, you can use Gmail Hotmail. However, I want you to use your name as it is on file with the college because you paid for your access into this course um, you know at the time you enrolled so if you are Pearson how do I know that Mary Smith is actually Jane Doe how do I know that right they have to have a way to reconcile that also, I need you to put, and I know this sounds crazy, but I'm telling you that this has been a struggle. Um, I will tell you that you need to put your first name in the first name box and your last name in the last name box. Students have been switching that up. It causes issues with grading, and I want to make sure that that publisher knows who you are. These are not hard requests. They just require that you pay a little bit of attention. You will need your instructor's course code, and remember we saw that, but we're going to look at it again, and you're going to need something to pay with, which in your case, you opted in, you purchased that access when you enrolled in the course, so I've provided you with the access code. So let's click on OK, register now. Okay, so what is the course code? Well, I'm going to come back to pause. That was my tab in pause. And to me, I tried to make it real easy for you by putting everything on the home page. So up here at the top in pause, I can quickly go back to the course home page, scroll down, and you can rewind the video anytime, right? So pause it. I'm going to double click. That's the course code. Keep your mouse on top 
of that selection. Don't be over here, don't be down here, up here, up here, here. Put your mouse right on top, right click, copy. I'm going to go back to the tab where I was registering. Click, keep the mouse there, right click, paste. If you try to paste all over here, over here, nope. You click, then you keep your mouse there, right click, paste. That's the course code, continue. All right, it says, do you already have a username and password? If you have taken um, one of our math courses, you may have gone through the self-paced Pearson um, My Math Lab. And what happened then is your teacher actually probably supplied your email address, your Southwest email address, to Pearson. So you may find that you actually already have a username and you can't remember your password. If you want to continue to use that, just use the forgot your you know username or password again if you've been through the math class um, or create a new one I'm gonna create a new one what email address do I want to use well I'm gonna use um, how about 2020 I'm making this up you're gonna use a real one okay uh, I'm gonna say BUSN 1360 uh, L01 I'm making a really long one I shouldn't do that should I um, is that gonna be my uh, username yes I should copy that so I remember it. Um, I need to put in some kind of password. Notice all these requirements. Got to do all that. So let's say I'll make up something here. Need to re-enter that password. Okay, now first name. First name. Okay, my first name is pretend. My last name is student. Uh, what is my security question? Uh, what town was were you born in? And you know whatever. So I'm totally making this up, right? Uh, you accept the terms of agreement. Uh, one or more of these applies to me. I'm enrolled in Miller High School. I'm under the age of 18. I reside outside the United States. If that's a you know applies to you, check it. That's new this year, so check that if it applies to you. I do not wish to receive information from Pearson Products. Again, that, that's entirely up to you. I'm going to check it just to show to you that you have that option. Okay. Create account. Ah, here we are. Now, you could pay $99, but remember, you paid a, a discounted price. You paid less than $99 at the time you enrolled because the state negotiated the best price possible using volume discount. So, you have an access code. Where is that access code? It's here. Again, it's in pause, it's on that home page. You select. And notice I didn't select that. I selected very precisely. Very precisely. If you can't select it precisely, then write it down. Okay, I'm going to go back. And I believe, let's hold our breath, I'm going to click, keep my mouse there, right click. Um, ooh, maybe paste is plain text. Yes. Okay, when filled completely in, click finish. Love that. Now, while this is loading, I know that you received an email from, it's like Red something, I think it says the name Red, and it was a link to your book. The problem is the link was only to your book and not to the exercises that you're going to be required to use. So what I want you to do is I want you to access your book as well as your assignments in, in, through my IT lab, through the method that I'm showing you right now, okay? It doesn't hurt to access your book through that other link. It's just that you don't have the ability to see your assignments. So do this. I think it's going to be better. All righty. Confirm that you're in the correct section. All right. Taught by me. That's me. This is my username, my email, theoretically, right, my account ID. You can print this if you want. It might be a good idea to help you remember. And I'm there, so I need to continue on. Um, yeah, it even says print this page for your records. Has the support information in case you need to access them. And what I need to do is, um, oh, my registration is being processed. Okay, well, let's go to the Pearson portal. The, that processing should be immediate. That's interesting. Okay, so. 
basically here's what I, I could do. I could, it's taking me to the sign-in page. Let's say this is tomorrow. I could just put in myitlab.com. Now I've already registered as a student. Now I need to sign in. Oh, did I tell you you're going to fight this all semester? You are absolutely going to fight fight this all semester. I'm going to close that. And remember I said always allow pop-ups. Um, you're going to type in, oh, not that. You're going to type in your, uh, what was my username? Oh, my goodness. Uh, you're going to type in your um, username and uh, password. Let's hope I remember mine because I kind of made it up. Um, all right. So they want me to select my country, and I'm going to select United States. And let's just make sure. You see there's a scroll bar here. Probably need to scroll to the bottom of both of these. And you need to agree, otherwise it's not going to let you in. And click on continue. Whew. Right? Now you're in. So I wanted to walk you through those steps together. Here's our course. I'm going to, let me click to go in. I just clicked right on the course. So if you are familiar with uh, courses where you've had a, a free 14-day trial, because you purchased your access as part of enrolling, you don't need to worry about that 14-day free trial. Okay, it's going to take, I'm telling you, it's going to take your computer a while to get this down, that you've got to, like I said, you'll be fighting this, enable those pop-ups, enable those pop-ups. There we are. Okay. So now let's look at our course materials. I'm not going to go through everything, obviously. I'm just getting you started. But I'm going to encourage you to come down here to uh, course materials. There is also a, an assignment calendar. Uh, there's grades. But let's go to course materials. My advice inside of my IT lab, be patient. You're going to have to be very patient while things load. Okay, let me just tell you how the course is set up because uh, I think this will be helpful. Here's the first thing I want to say. At the top it says ebook, but I have links to the ebook in all of these folders. So please don't worry about, you know, that this is the only place. In fact, it might be a little confusing to go to the ebook because your textbook is actually huge. We only cover some chapters within the textbook. Um, we would never be able to cover in a single semester everything that is included in this ebook. So you can go to the ebook this way, but I'm going to show you a better way. Um, here you also have a link if you want to buy the printed copy because some people like to be able to reference it when they're away from the computer or when they're doing assignments and some people find this easier. However, for this course the ebook is required because the ebook contains videos that you are required to watch. What if you need data files that are referred to within the chapter? Um, I provide those for you in pause, but you, if you want to do something supplemental, there may be time when you need those files, and so I want you to know there's a link available, right? So what we just did is we went to My Courses. We went to Course Materials, and that's also called My Courses. We were patient as we waited for this to display, and we looked at the ebook folder. That being said, you probably don't really need to return to this ebook folder. What you're going to want to do is go to Word Workshop 1. Why do I need to go to Word Workshop 1? Well, I recall that we saved this schedule. And I told you we need to look at our Saturday assignments, and, and we do. We just completed one of those assignments, which is we created our My IT Lab user and login you don't have to use the 14-day free trial because you've already paid for, ac for access. If a student 
opted out and I do not recommend that, then they would need to complete this assignment by using the 14-day free trial. Now we still have two other things due by Saturday. We're going to look at those in a minute. But I see that I need to do the My IT Lab Word 1 simulator. So we need to look at that. I see that we have some pause assignments due and then we actually have an optional assignment that we can do. So we're looking at what's due this week. I'm going to return to My IT Lab. Here, once again, is your ebook, but this link will go directly to Word Chapter 1. I'm going to show you that. I'm going to click that link. Here's a pop up. If you see that red um, box, your pop ups are going to be blocked. You're going to struggle with this constantly. Since I see it back there, I'm going to click on it and I'm going to say always, and I've already done that, right, to make sure. Now, I have two windows open. Let me go back. See this link, Word Chapter 1 eText? Just click that. And I'm going to be, ah, okay, here's the next thing that may or may not happen on your computer. It's telling me that Flash has not been enabled, and I need to enable it. I have to use Flash. So click this, Get Flash. Whoop, did you see what happened? Pop-ups. Now, this time I don't have that option to enable, so click on Manage. What's happening is it blocked the site from running Flash because that's what Chrome and most other browsers are going to recommend by default. Um, I, don't, I don't want that. It, it can ask first. That, that's okay. Okay, so it opened another tab when it did that. See all these tabs that I have open? So I'm going to close that and let me click again, Get Flash. You see why I wanted to lead you through this? Now it's asking me and I'm going to tell it Allow. You can pause the video, you can rewind the video to make sure that you have the steps. But I do want to walk you through this again now that we have our settings enabled. So here's the book, here's the ebook. I'm going to close it because I'm going to open it again because I want you to see how this works. I'm going to close the ebook. Where did I go? I went to course materials and I was patient as the page loaded. Remember we looked at the ebook folder, but you know, probably unless you want that printed book or some data files, you probably don't need that. Go to Word Workshop 1 and I click it. And I'm going to open the eText. When I open this, I see a link to Word Chapter 1 eText. Click it. And now that all my settings are set correctly, I should go right in. Now, periodically, it will ask you again. Uh, probably around maybe February, you might have to answer those questions again. You've got the video as a resource. You can return to it. Now, I really like this book. It's clickable. See here, like here's a page number. I can click it to go straight to the page. Terms are highlighted. And I do encourage you to read through this because it tells you not just the how-to's, it tells you the um, best practices approach. And I think that's important. I can go through the pages and I'm going very deliberately so that I can see these blue boxes. When I see these blue boxes, it's going to tell me here's what I'm supposed to do on the taskbar. I'm supposed to click down here where it says ask me anything and I'm supposed to search for Word for example, and I can type Word, and then I could click to open. So I can follow these steps. They've got nice pictures, which are very helpful. Now, they also have something else, but this particular, this is a link to a video. This particular video link, I believe, for each chapter, um, sometimes it, it's broken, but it, it's such a small number of steps that I think you can navigate this uh, without the video because it's simply telling you to open Word. Okay, so I don't want to demonstrate that. I'm going to click Next, and what I'm looking for are the, is the blue box because when I see these blue boxes, that means that I have to do that. I have to actually complete those steps. And I'm going to tell you more about that in a minute, but just know 
The first chapter is a, a lot of description. Uh, later chapters will have a lot more things to do. And let me make this smaller so that I can see the page. I might even, yeah, let me fit it because I'm not really trying to read it. I'm trying to find these blue boxes. Ah, see, here's a, here's a blue box. Okay, so now let me zoom in. See the blue box, and it's telling me to change the view and show non-printing characters. And you can read this, and you can complete the steps by reading it, but a picture is worth a thousand words, and a video is worth a million. So click on, see, see I'm putting my mouse next to where it says W01.01, .01, and there's a little icon there. If I click on that, I'm going to let this load. It's going to tell. It's going to show me, and I just need to do what it tells me to do. Microsoft, Microsoft Word, 2016, Chapter One, Blue Box One, to change the view and show non-printing characters. Word provides a number of ways to view your document. Each view serves a different purpose, displaying its own features and elements. The default view in Word 2016 is print layout. Okay. I don't want to play this whole video. They're going to walk me. And preferred layout. Okay, so Let see how they're showing out, you. They're actually objects. demonstrating. Translate and this word. entire video is 2 minutes and 21 seconds. So you can either read through the steps or you can show this video and just follow the steps in the video. And this is where I say that the printed book is not as helpful as the digital book. So the digital book is required for the course. Now I've got another tab that it opened. You see all these pop-ups, all these windows. So I'm closing that tab and I'm back to my book. Okay, so that's the book. I'm going to close the book. And remember we got to that under Course Materials, the Word Workshop 1 folder. Now there are other things. There's a great audio PowerPoint, but the assignment that you're required to do is the simulator. So I'm going to go to the simulator. And you're going to want to click it, but these three dots let me close that even. These three dots are much more, much more helpful. Okay, come on because I can get, well, I, I'm sorry, it's because I'm in as an instructor, isn't it? No, I'm in as a student. Okay, anyway, the three dots are more helpful because they give you those options to view your submissions or to open it. Okay, now the way this works, very briefly, is that you have an instruction. Start Word 2016, begin a blank document. Well, remember in the instructions, it actually told me that I should click where it says ask me anything I should type word 2016 now here's the cool thing I am doing this in the simulator and the simulator is a program that mimics my computer but it is not my computer but it will will function for the purposes of this assignment as if it is my computer so I'm not even I'm not working in my computer right now that same box for me is much lower on the screen down here this is all within this simulator window that I'm grabbing and moving around right so I'm clicking I'm doing the instructions there it said start Microsoft and it said to begin a blank document and I here's a blank document and I'm beginning that and then it shows me the next part of the instruction now if I don't know how to do that instruction there is more support for you I can go over here to these learning aids and you can you can read you can watch a long video that kinda of covers a lot of concepts or you can do the practice now here's the practice Click the Insert tab. Oh, okay. In the Text Group, click the Object button arrow and then click Text from File. So see the red marching ants there? That's what they call those. That's telling me what to do. Text from File. In the Insert File dialog box, double-click the W01H1 Camps file. Now, now that it's taught me, I need to do it myself. So, were you paying attention? 
That's the danger of the practice. Make sure you don't zone out. The purpose is not to just get through. The purpose is to learn. If there's ever a skill that you are going to use in the workforce and in your everyday life, it is Microsoft Word, right? So we need to learn these features. It told me to click on Insert. It told me to go to the Objects tab, wasn't that this? And insert text from file. Now, if you're saying, but I don't have this file on my computer, neither do I. This is a simulator, and so it is simulating these steps as long as we click in the right place. And it told me to double click. Now, am I done? No, I've got more work to do here. It, down at the bottom it says save the document in the documents folder and use this name and then close the document. Now, remember we're working in the simulator. I'm not actually saving this to my computer. This is all within the simulator. Click on save is what it wants me to do. It said to, to put it in the documents folder and it said to give it the name W01H1 and save and then don't forget the last step close the document now I've completed that task and it has advanced me to the second task so there's multiple steps inside and if your steps are appearing on the right hand side it just means that the resolution of your monitor is different from mine that's all Okay, so um, you see how to work through that. You're going to go through all 17 tasks and then you're going to submit your work. You can save and continue working, but I'm going to submit. Uh, yes, I have not completed it. Um, but anyway, you kind of get an idea of that. It tells me my score immediately and ultimately I will post that score into PAUSE and I will email you because PAUSE is our official college system. Okay, so make sure that you're checking PAUSE. You're going to do a lot of work in my IT lab but you cannot ignore PAUSE. Alright, so where are we at? Let me go back to my schedule. We have created our MyIT username. We have started our work on the simulator and of course we need to finish that. But we need to look a little bit more at pause because we've got this quiz, we've got this case, but we also have an attendance quiz and we have our discussion. Woo! Let's look up here again. Let's start with pause and we're going to do the attendance quiz. Pause. Where do I find that quiz? Well, if you remember we were under content earlier and we've started, you know, working in um, in pause, and we started working with this word one uh, assignment. This will also help to keep you on track. Oh, I'm so sorry. I thought I had a link to that attendance quiz. It must. Be, I'm sorry. It must be in what my getting started material. Oh yes, it is. I'm sorry. Okay. I'm going to show you two things. Within pause, under this table of contents, you're going to find all the information that that you need. So here's like syllabus schedule. The the quiz that you need to do is this assessment activity. So under the getting started, if you will expand assessment activities, this was our second category, then you will find your first reporting quiz. Notice it's due by the 25th. That's in a couple days. Click that. These are the instructions for the quiz. Oh goodness, it looks hard. Should I have studied? Well, let's see. I don't think so because I can't get in. How do I get in? Is it not letting me do it because I'm the instructor? What's the deal? I think, is it giving me grief because I'm the instructor? You should be able to get into that quiz. <laughs> oh, I'm just finding little things. I'm so sorry, the time will not begin. Okay, there should be a start button. Click start quiz to begin attempt one. Um, and I really want you to see that. Um, another way to get into quizzes is assessment and then quizzes. All your quizzes are going to be under here. So here's the first attendance quiz. Um, 
I don't think it's going to let me take it because I'm in as the instructor. Okay, I'm sorry. So it's not going to let me take it because I'm in as the instructor. I have a student account, but I'm still getting it set up for this course. So take the quiz. What I wanted to show you is that the quiz is one question, and it says, are you attending? And you're going to click yes, and you are going to complete that item. So it's as simple as this. We are under content. You have looked at syllabus, schedule, my IT lab. We've created our username. We've downloaded our schedule. We've looked at the syllabus. We've created our username for my IT lab. Now we're looking at assessment activities. And you're going to take this first attendance quiz. It's going to take you minutes, you seconds, really. You're going to you know we've already done this right you've created your my IT lab username you do not need to use the 14 day free trial because you've already paid for access when you enrolled in the course next you're going to do your class introduction here's a nice link to that and introduce yourself to the class you're going to pick up these points they are you know you don't want to lose these points just because you're not starting in the class so please do get started with that um, oh and I see we've got some introductions out there wonderful you guys are working I love it fantastic thank you thank you very much alright so now let's go just a little bit further we need to do our word quiz one so now we're into the heart of it right if I go to table of contents word workshop one here's the assigned activities and I'm just going to click to begin my Word Quiz 1. Alternatively, you can go to Assessments, Quizzes, and make sure you know it's Word, not PowerPoint or Excel, but Word Quiz 1. And you're going to take that quiz. Where do you get the answers to the quiz questions? You get them from your ebook. The ebook is in my IT lab under Course Materials, under Word Workshop 1. This goes directly to the chapter. Oops, I didn't mean to click that. Okay. So what else do I need to do as I work forward for this week? Um, well, uh, you have to do that simulator, don't forget. And you have this case. What am I supposed to do with the case? Let's click on that. All right. Down, look at, okay, it says save the files that are attached to this assignment Dropbox to your local computer or removable drive. So let's look all the way down. Here are the files that you're going to need for this assignment. You're going to save those to your computer. Okay, if you have trouble with that, Academic uh, Support Center, at, tell them, tell them you're not looking for support in Business 1360, you just need help saving files to your computer. No problem, right? Um, you can click on them. Sometimes classmates can help you, right? You're going to open My IT Lab and log in. You're going to enter our course and then click Course Materials. Well, you're well practiced with that, right? You're going to be patient as you wait for the screen to load. You have to enable the pop ups, and you'll constantly have to do that. You're going to go to that eText, Word Chapter 1 eText, and it's going to open to these pages. You're going to complete, it's going to open to the first page of that chapter, and you're going to complete all those blue boxes, right, that say open Word, save this file. You're going to complete all that. When you are finished, you will have created these three files. Your files will not say last first. Your files will actually have your last name and your first name. When you have saved all three of those files, you will submit them into this Dropbox. If you don't know how, I've provided a video that will show you how. Okay? You, basically, you upload them and then, then you're going to add and submit. My screen looks a little different here and I do apologize for that. All right. I know this is a lot of information. It's important to hit the ground running. Some of these things are not going to take that long. Um, looking at the schedule, focus on this week, right? So your schedule and your syllabus. Um, answer this attendance quiz. It's going to just take a couple seconds. Introduce yourself. You know, I see that you're already out there doing that. Make sure you're working in my IT lab, right? Then once you get finished, don't, you know, pause make sure that you're doing the simulator make sure you're working on that case because each week you're gonna have more 
work to do. So get out there and get working on it and keep going through it. And we'll talk more later, okay, as you look ahead at other assignments. So welcome to the class. I really do appreciate you and thank you for, for uh, spending this semester with, with me and giving it your best. I think you'll learn a lot. Learning involves practice and so you're going to be doing some assignments, all right, but you knew that, so that's no no big deal. Um, you can do this. You've got a lot of support out there. That ebook is filled with the videos. The simulator is great. It's got that practice tool that will show you how to do things. The important thing is to get started. If you get stuck, email me with as much information as you can so that I can assist you. Um, I might have to ask you some questions so that I can better assist you. If so, don't get discouraged. Try to respond to me as quickly as you can so that I can continue to support you. All right. Thank you so much, folks. I know this was a long video. Yeah, almost an hour. Um, but I think it's just important at the beginning of class. Thanks, and I'm looking forward to a great semester. I really am.